Hi there, welcome to Chemistry 3007. We're talking about approximate wave functions. And this is a little aside here uh, about Walter Cohn, specifically Walter Cohn's thoughts on the wave function, which you may be interested to know about. Okay, well, if you read Walter Cohn's Nobel lecture, um, he gave some cogent arguments to suggest that the wave function is actually too complicated to write down for about a thousand electrons, the exact wave function. And because of that, he said that the wave function is not a legitimate concept for large systems. Now, for most of these lectures, we've been talking about the wave function and how to calculate it. And now a Nobel Prize winner has said it's actually useless for anything that's not very large. A thousand electrons isn't really very large. So what did he actually say? Well, he used that as the jumping off point, point for developing a new theory of quantum mechanics called density functional theory. He started developing quantum models based on the electron density. And the electron density is just where the electrons are. It's the integral of the square of the wave function, which tells you the probability distribution for all the electrons. And you have to integrate those over all the coordinates of all the electrons except for one. And if you're not interested in whether it's spin up or spin down electrons, you can integrate out over the spin coordinate of the first electron as well. And this would give you the probability density of one electron. Now all electrons are the same, so if we want the total electron density, we would only have to multiply that by the number n, which is the number of electrons. And this would be the total electron density. What I've written down here is the electron density of one electron in the system. This would integrate to one, but if we want a total electron density, we would have to multiply this quantity by n. Okay, so the wave function is useless apparently, according to Walter Cohn. Well, he went further with uh, Hohenberg. He proved in four lines, and you can see the proof over here, that the quantum mechanical energy is a unique functional of the electron density, not the energy here, as I've written, a typographical error. The quantum mechanical energy depends only on the electron density, not on the whole wave function. What a remarkable result, proved in four lines here. Um, it turns out that this particular approach didn't work too well for them. So soon after, he showed with Lu Sham in 1965 that the electron de density determines a unique single determinant wave function called the Cohn-Sham determinant wave function, which has the same electron density as the exact wave function. And using that idea, he could approximate the kinetic energy of the system and make good approximations to the total electron density. So he couldn't make a density functional theory only on the density, um, but he was able to make a kind of density functional theory based on a simple wave function. That's the cone sham wave function, which happens to give the exact electron density of any system. Okay, it turns out now he won the Nobel Prize for this idea and developing these functionals that this density functional theory produces some of the best results for larger systems and it's quick. Um, unfortunately, no one really knows uh, what this unique functional of the density is. We know it exists. The proof is given here. Um, it's a non-constructive proof. It doesn't tell you how to construct this functional. This proof just tells you that this functional exists and it's unique and if we knew it, it would be set. But that's all it says. It doesn't tell you how to construct it. Uh, the name of the game in density functional theory is to make these functionals and test them and um, try to improve them. And the way we test them is to compare them to results, very good results, from non-density functional theory calculations. 
So in order to use this theory and benchmark it, we either have to use very good calculations or maybe experiment. Experiments are a little bit unreliable for bigger systems, so we tend to use theory, wave function theory, without density functional theory. So density functional theory is a theory built on theory, and it works very well. See you later.